Now that we have built all of the wheels, we are going to now attach the wheels to the drive base. As you can see, they fit pretty nicely inside of here. The items that you're going to need are the 2.5 inch screws, the special screws that you had. You need six of those. You're going to have your four motor caps for your four drive motors. And then you're going to need six either special bearings that are thinner or a regular bearing that is shaved on one side so that it can fit on the inside of a C channel. First thing we're going to do is in order for this whole thing to work, we're going to have to take off the four standoffs that we put on the inside. All right, now that we've taken off the standoffs here, we're gonna put motor caps in on these first. The far hole on the motor is 10 holes back. As you can see, the motor will be resting around this place right here. This one mirrors this 10 holes back on the middle hole as well. When tightening these down, you have to make sure not to tighten them too much or they will strip the motor caps. Now that the motor caps are connected, we're going to add the bearings onto the chassis. Now these special bearings do not go into these since they are in the middle holes. These go into the bottom holes. We're going to have the bearings on the outside. So for this, the first bearing that we're going to put is on the eighth hole back, as you can see here. To use half inch screws here. tightened this time we're going to do that again this time it is two holes from here so one two and then the bearing is on the middle three and then two more and we're going to place one more in the back this one as you can see rests right before the engravement on the fifth hole this is a brief vision of where these spots should be. I'm going to copy these bearings on the other side. Now that the bearings have been placed onto the chassis, we are going to put the wheels into their spots. For this first wheel, we're going to take the 2.5 inch screw. We're going to put it through the bearing we're going to take a cap's nut and put it against this. What we are making is called a screw joint. The bearing on the screw makes sure that the screw is centered in the hole. This increases stability, gets rid of all slop, which helps in autonomous, and it makes uh, it a lot stronger. If you remember the standoffs that we had here beforehand, this would act as that standoff. So now, we're going to put specific spacing into this. Now that may vary based off of your chassis, but this is the spacing we found for ours. So you start with a one and two washers, and then you put the, the wheel on this way. Then you screw this in all the way, making sure that the caps nut is not moving. You can take a wrench if you need to and place it against that caps nut to make sure that it doesn't move. And then slowly screw that in. Once you see the screw coming out the other end, you will place a caps nut on this side. Now, the crown of the caps nut should be facing the 25 hole C channel. If you need to use special pliers for this, you can. So as you can see, once it's threaded, it should hold. And you can use a screwdriver to get it all the way through. Now, when you're doing this, you want to hold this in place when it comes out the other side, because we're going to place another caps nut on that other side. The reason we're doing this is the same reason that we put a screw through a standoff. Uh, is because we want to create a pulling force that goes between, between the C-channel. For a screw and a caps nut, that force is the screw head and the caps nut. For this screw joint, 
we have two places of force. The first one is the screw head and the Keps nuts that are connected on the bearing side. And the second place is the Keps nut and the Keps nut connected on the 25 hole C channel. Now, you're going to tighten the Keps nut to the Keps nut when doing this. Now, as you can see, let's see that this can spin pretty easily. All right, now, we're going to do the same thing three more times for the four Omni wheels that we have. All right, now that we have completed the four wheels, we're going to add the middle wheel. Now, this is basically the same spacing here. If you used a flex wheel, this spacing will be different. There'll be no spacing. If you use a regular grip wheel, this spacing will be the same as the regular spacing. All right, once you have placed all six wheels on, we're going to do the final step of the chassis, which is attach the motor axles and the motor gears. There are four 36 tooth gears that are now going to be used for these specific purposes, four regular bearings. And these bearings are going to go with the middle hole of these bearings going in the position where the axle would go if it were to go into the motor. So these two are going to be directly between the two caps nuts connecting the base C channel. We put the red screws coming from the inside so that the caps nuts are not hitting the wheels or have the possibility of hitting the wheels. We want it to be as, li as little contact on the inside of these things as possible to reduce friction. Now we're gonna do this three more times in the three other places where the axles will go. Okay, now that these four bearings are placed on the chassis, we're going to put the spacing onto this. So when attaching these, I prefer to go from the inside to the outside, but this is based on personal preference. If you wish to go from the outside to the inside, it doesn't really matter. Based on our spacing, I have a one and one washer before the gear. This makes sense because there's a Keps nut before this gear. And there's a reason that we only put one bearing in this because the motor acts as a bearing itself. Before we add the gear, these need to be square inserts and these take a little bit more energy. So I have to force them in a little. Then you're going to slide the gear in. For this, I tend to like to lift up the wheel until it's in the right place and then put it back down. And then it's nice and snug. Then we have a 0.5 inch spacer. And then we're going to have a collar which are important to keep these in place. So whenever you're doing axles, you will probably use a collar. This is a steel collar because the nylon collars can slip and it can cause issues. Then finally, we have a three inch two washers. When you're using metal washers, do not put them up against the C channel because they will cause friction because metal that spins against metal that doesn't spin causes a lot of friction. Remember, the spacing is relative to you. So if you need to change it, that is okay. When tightening the, co the collar to the, to the axle, you take an insert here, as you can see, and push the axle in. Now you're gonna need a smaller screwdriver for these, usually T8s, tighten them down, and there's it. You can see here, this spins very nicely. Now, we're going to do this three more times in the three other areas. 